I am plant-based for over two years, um, hoping that, you know, the plant-based would maybe correct it. Um, sounds like a big recovery though. And what, what is CMC? It's the joint thumb. They say it's very common oh. to get the arth arthritis and that ball of your uh, thumb. Right. I'm familiar with that. Um, I'm not familiar with the surgery. Um, you might look up a company. They're doing it in the knees uh, called BioSplice, B-I-O Splice. Okay. They are one of the companies on the leading edge of inducing new cartilage formation using genetic engineering. It's not actually stem cell therapy, but uh, it's cutting edge. And at least I think for the knee, they've accumulated so much data. Some people say they'll be FDA approved um, by 2023. Uh, there may be other companies, you know, working on that, uh, other joints, but, you know, it does have to go through the FDA pathway. Um, uh, you know, lots of onion, garlic, all the anti-inflammatory foods on the planet. You're probably doing that, but I don't have a specific, I don't know if you've ever done topical full spectrum CBD hemp, you know, on the joint and see if you get any absorbed and see how that helps you. That can be quite anti-inflammatory. Okay. And according to all the tests that you suggested, um, like, do, do, is there a place to go? Like I live in Ohio. So is there a place to go to see where I might be able to go get some of these? Well, last I checked, Michigan and Ohio are pretty close to each other. So a lot of oh, people okay. drive up from Ohio to my clinic, which is you know, about 60 minutes north of the border. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Randy, for that. Thank you, doctor. Next, we have Angela. Angela, what's your question? Thank you very much, Dr. Khan. I appreciate this. Um, I wanted to ask you if um, ground down nigella sativa, black cumin yeah. seeds contain um, lignans, not the oil, but the ground down seeds. Yeah, the, there actually are a lot of questions about um, black cumin seeds, nigella sativa in the question chat box, I noticed. I'm a, a recent and big fan excuse me, of Nigella sativa. And just in case people don't know, there is the spice cumin, uh, a important staple of the Indian diet. Cumin is one of the components of curry powder, a wonderful organic purchase to add to your food. I have a big bottle of organic curry powder. I liberally put on top of all my wife's good cooking and mess it up, but I just want the spice. But there's a separate black cumin seed with the chemical name Nigella sativa. It's reported it's been found in King Tut's tomb. So it goes back a few thousand years in human uh, nutrition. Uh, the prophet Muhammad and the Muslim faith said black cumin seed can cure all things but death because the doctors already were using it. And there actually are about 800 scientific human studies and basic studies about the benefits of adding black cumin seeds to your diet, weight loss, diabetic control, cholesterol control, inflammation. There is not a rich lignin concentration of black cumin seeds. There's other reasons to um, buy either whole black cumin seeds or ground. I cannot find the answer. If you need to grind your whole seeds, like you might grind whole flaxseed, it's quite a production. So lately I've been buying uh, a brand uh, non-GMO ground black cumin it's another thing I add on my lunch pretty much every day. Uh, it has a nice peppery flavor. And yes, you mentioned you can buy high quality oil, black cumin seed oil or black cumin seed oil capsules. Uh, I always prefer, you know, the whole food when there's a chance, get all the fiber. So um, yeah, I've played with all of it and I recommend people consider looking at it. Um, it, it actually is not well known, but during the pandemic, again, there were four or five published studies that the regular use of black cumin seeds supported the immune system and actually showed some benefit to preventing severity of illness. So it was actually on some very well-known protocols as an alternative to other approaches for managing risk and uh, illness from the disease. Thank you there, uh, Angela. Next we have Benny. Benny, what is your question? Uh, thank you, doctor. Don't know if you covered this before. Heard you mention raw food. Do you have a, any suggested percentage of raw food in the diet that's beneficial? 
And also, do you have any comment on food combining as uh, discussed by Herbert Shelton and the benefits of colon cleansing? Thank you. Yeah, I'll probably leave the last two questions to your next speaker, who is awesome and just signed on, Dr. Michael Clapper. Um, in terms of raw versus cooked, I don't measure in my life. Again, I've been vegan 45 years. I eat food. I always eat at least one salad, as I say, bigger than my head. I think I stole that from Chef AJ. That's obviously raw. Um, you know, my nuts are raw. My seeds are raw. But uh, I'm not completely raw like Hippocrates Health Institute and other educators for certain conditions. I'm certainly not completely cooked. There was a fairly um, widely reported study recently, 2022, um, that uh, vegetables may not have as much cardiovascular prevention as previously reported. And, you know, the media loves this. The meat industry loves this. When you read the study, both cooked mm. vegetables and raw vegetables both showed in a big database benefits for the prevention of cardiovascular disease. But the statistical significance was only for raw vegetables. So eat your cooked, eat your raw. That's only one study. It doesn't change all of biologic science for 70 years when you have one study. But there may be some good benefit to eat an apple, an orange, a radish, you know, occasionally dip raw broccoli in your organic hummus and all the other wonderful things we enjoy for health. Next up is Linda. Linda, could you please, I'm going to unmute you if you could please ask your question. Um, yes. Hi, Dr. Khan. I'm a big fan. Happy Passover. I'm also a big fan of other whole food plant-based doctors. And for example, Dr. Furman, um, he is not, uh, I don't think he's a big advocate of medication. I'm sure that he knows there are times to use it. But my question is about this general topic about longevity. You know, I'm not gonna get into my own personal situation, except that I do eat very well, I think, 90% whole food plant-based. Um, but I have other things like lipoprotein A. So my concern is about those that fit into the category that you would nuance that might need medication. What are the endpoints, the hard endpoints for people on medications like statins over the long period of time, longevity wise? Happy holidays. Very quick answer because it's a wonderful question. But um, what's often missing in the decision to put somebody on lifelong medication is a precise diagnosis, at least in my heart field. So people are put on statins and we have no idea if they even have the disease statins are indicated for, which is atherosclerosis. So even our stodgy American Heart Association says, if you've been put on statins and you have one of those calcium CT scans and it's zero, unless you're a smoker or an advanced diabetic, you don't need statins generally. And similarly, if you do a carotid CIMT scan and it's clean as a whistle, I mean, the scientific world has said now for about 17 years, if you don't have the disease, you very rarely need a preventive treatment with prescription drugs, of course, you celebrate the good news and you keep on a healthy lifestyle or you adopt a healthy lifestyle. There are exceptions to that, but those are printed protocols by very prestigious groups. Um, if you have disease, I use prescription drugs and I have all the world of respect for Dr. Joel Furman. Uh, I don't believe he's seeing patients actively anymore. I have an overwhelmingly large practice of patients. Um, the cardiology community now wants according to science and guidelines, if you have bad heart disease, bad blockages, bypass stents, uh, strokes, we want your LDL cholesterol to be 55 or lower, a very aggressive goal. Most often that takes a great lifestyle plus some type of prescription drug. In my clinic, very low dose, uh, very flexible in what we use, but we get uh, we get the results. We can't not get the results because we have to stop and start to reverse plaque. And I believe the Dr. Ornish program, the Pritikin program, the McDougall program, the Furman program, the Barnard program, you know, these are all radically good. But even Dr. Uh, Esselstyn used statins in his trials. He used Provostatin when needed. You know, we have a lot of tools. You can't win everything with a carrot. You won't win with a carrot alone. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, the next person up is um, Al Alan. Um, I'm going to unmute you, and if you could um, ask your question. Yes, thank you. You mentioned hyperbaric chamber. There's a system out there called LIVO2 that is exercising uh, with oxygen that has contrast therapy. Yeah. There's no studies on it, but do you think theoretically that it can duplicate hyperbaric activity? And secondly, on NEC, there's a mouse, a, rare, a small mouse study um, that showed cancer development in healthy mice using NEC. What do you think of that study? And do you think it's dangerous to use NEC for cancer? Okay, so Thank to answer you. the first one, I'm not a distributor, but my workout this morning was on my LIVO2 unit. I have my basement and an elliptical. Uh, I know the science. I wish there were human studies. But it's very simply, you do a workout on a treadmill, an elliptical, a bicycle with a mask on your face. And part of the time, the oxygen level is super high. And part of the time, the oxygen level is super low. It's like climbing to a mountaintop, back to baseline, mountaintop, baseline. It's a very challenging workout. I wouldn't recommend for everybody. But at least theoretically, it might substitute for hyperbaric oxygen therapy in an anti-aging world. We don't know that for sure. I haven't grown back a ponytail since I started doing it. I thought that might happen. Um, Live O2, adaptive contrast. I'm unaware of that mouse study. But, you know, NAC has, is an FDA-approved drug for people with thick mucus like cystic fibrosis. It had to go through enormous human studies. So I'm not going to be dissuaded by one mouse study. Uh, there's a lot of things that show up in one study causing cancer, and it's hard not to pay attention. All these drug recalls of blood pressure drugs, lately the largest prescribed blood pressure class called angiotensin receptor blockers, one study with lung cancer. You know, you, you worry, but you can't throw everything out on one study, particularly a mouse study. Thank you. Uh, the next one up is David M. I'm going to unmute you if you could please ask your question. Hi, Dr. Kahn. Um, I'm wondering if you have an opinion about whether having a deviated septum surgically corrected would improve one's health? Well, uh, really in less than a minute, obstructive sleep apnea has a lot of causes. It does take a serious toll on health. That simple home sleep study, that's widely available. The WatchPat one is a great solution. And if a person is found to have obstructive sleep apnea, weight loss, um, various procedures on the palate using laser, we're correcting a deviated septum. You know, sometimes deviated septum just produces noisy sleep, not actual sleep apnea, and then it's a cosmetic issue. Um, but yeah, that is something you need to see a competent uh, ear, nose, and throat doc. Some of the ear, nose, and throat docs are board certified in sleep medicine and might be a special kind of doc to see. Thank you. Um, next one up is David S. I'm going to unmute you if you could please ask your question. Hi, Dr. Khan. I'll keep it really quick. I took your advice and got a uh, calcium CT score, and thankfully it was zero. But hey. then, yeah, later at the same practice, and I think on the same machine, I got a uh, low dose CT lung screening, and my lungs were fine. But as an incidental finding, the radiologist wrote calcified atherosclerotic plaques in the aortic arch and coronary arteries. And I don't know how to reconcile those two findings, and neither did my doctor. T ten second answer. Ask for a copy of both CT scans on a CD disc. Uh, arrange a console with me and mail them to me and let me look at them. Um, you know, somebody competent needs to look at both. And even though I'm not a radiologist, I've looked at, you know, coronary arteries by CT thousands of times. Right, thank you, should, you. you should get it resolved. I've seen errors every which way you're mentioning. I think we have one minute left though. Yep. Actually, it seems like we've run out of time. Um, uh, sorry, Stephen and Doreen. I'll just say, if anybody wants to reach me, I have an email, drkahn at kahncenter.com, D-R-K-A-H-N at K-A-H-N center.com. So Stephen and Doreen, you want to send me an email, I'll try and answer your question. Mm -hmm.